a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Most of us, at some point in our lives, were afraid of the dark. But what if it's in darkness that the human mind and spirit really come alive? Today's episode focuses on the research of Holly Moyes, an associate professor of archaeology at the University of California, Merced. Holly studies some of the darkest places in the world. Caves. She argues that it was in caves and in darkness that humans first developed creativity and spirituality. What's a cave? We have different ideas about caves. But in my research, I have to differentiate between caves and rock shelters because we do different things in these different spaces based on the quality of light. So in rock shelters, they're nice and light, and they have twilight areas, and you can live in them, and people even sometimes build little cities inside them. But deep, dark caves, the kind that I call caves, are actually have dark zones. Now, in the dark zone, that's a whole different thing. Dark zones are not really very good places to live. And in fact, most people, through time and space, have used these as ritual spaces. And so even today, when we think about it, a lot of the great world religions have pilgrimages to caves. We still consider caves sacred. These are very elaborate. Thousands of people go there. People sometimes die going to these pilgrimages, to these ritual, uh, very important sacred sites. So if we begin to really understand how these dark zones of caves are used, you have to ask, why caves? What, what is it that draws us into the cave? When you go in a cave, you usually go into the earth or you go down, right? So that in itself is interesting. But aside from that, what's the first thing you think about when you think about cave? Darkness, right? So could darkness have something to do with this pattern of ritual usage over time and space? So that got me interested in sensory deprivation studies that were done in the mid-1900s, right? So these were done at major universities in the U.S. and Canada um, to try to understand what happens when you cut off your senses. And what did these researchers find? Well, first of all, that there's a lot of individual difference. People experience this differently. But they also noticed some other things as well, um, and that is that there was differences in feelings. Um, and John Lilly actually began to suggest that there was also differences in the way people think. So uh, I partnered with some cognitive uh, scientists, and we decided to do a little experiment. So in our experiment, the first thing we did is that they wrote a survey. And our survey was kind of interesting because it, it gave little scenarios, right? So we had little questions, and, the, and in these scenarios, they could have different kind of ambiguous answers. But the one thing that they forced people to do was to try to explain the unexplainable. So this is an example of one of our questions. Imagine your grandpa passed away one year ago today, and on the day of his death, you wake up to the scent of his cigar smoke. No one in the house smokes, and the scent is very unique. Would you be more inclined to think, and we gave them four choices, A, it was just a coincidence, B, you're just hallucinating, C, God may be letting you know he's all right, or D, it may possibly be a sign from his spirit. Now, notice in the first two answers, this would require something that we're calling kind of rational, scientific thinking, explain it away as an everyday occurrence. However, the second two answers are what we call imaginary thinking. So for imaginary thinking, you have to invoke some sort of a deity or a supernatural force in order to explain the unexplainable. And so this is what separates humans from other species. It's our ability to live in our imaginations. What does all this mean? What's out there about this? Well, it's not out there, it's in there. When we take the archaeological record, ethnographic studies, research done in different universities, and my own little study, what it suggests 
is that our environment plays a very important part in not only how we feel, how we think, but also how we interpret our world. Although we avoid darkness, it makes us uncomfortable, it frightens us. We also seek it out for very specific reasons, because darkness frees our minds from the constant barrage of sensory data that demands our attention every minute of every day. Darkness. Allows us to recreate our world, to think about ourselves in a different way, maybe even create something new. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Vienna, Austria. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Vienna. Want to listen to the full talk? Find Holly's talk and more at TED.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you next time.